Um, we have we have five readers next are left, and our next reader is Loie Rodding, who grew up on the coast of Maine. Her writing and mixed media art have been featured in 3 AM Magazine, Native Magazine, Heavy Feather Review, Sand, which is in Berlin, Map Literary, The Wanderer, among others. Loey is a teaching artist for the Porch Writers Collective in Nashville, Tennessee, and her deb debut novel, Tight Little Vocal Chords, is now available from Kern Punked Press. Which is the sponsoring press of Small Fair and was really um, how this came about. So big ups to Kern Punk. I was gonna say my my first my first and forever thank you goes to Jesse and to Kern Punk um, for their support and for this wonderful um, week long event and and thank you Wendy for all of your help putting this together and supporting this wonderful cast of writers. Um, it's just been so moving thus far. Um, and I can't wait for the rest. I am going to read from Tight Little Vocal Chords, um, which came out in November, mid-pandemic. Um, and this is uh, a couple short sections from, from the beginning of the book, towards the beginning of the book. M admires and desires the woman in his mother's form. Such is the impact of her velvety touch, yet she remains untouchable, protected by her thinning dark hair and pale armor composed of a deceptively thick skin. So he sticks his child hands tightly between his knees and then behind his ears, seeking out his own smell, which came from her. No translation is required. Need or want or always, what is the taste of words like these? Translation is always required. M still craves his mother in part because he didn't get to see her die. When he was finally allowed to enter the room, all that remained was a few empty skirts standing in the middle of the room and a deeper silence. And a blue tin cup speckled with white by her pillow, half full of the pulpy seaweed she drank as tea, now cold. The sourness of it stung his lips. As many mothers do, she left deep scratches in his skin. C. M., still young, walking with the limp of new legs, knees the size of elbows that shake in the wind. His mother is laughing at the ocean, pressing her body into the horizon of ships headed for other countries. She is talking to an invisible sailor who has joined them for their daily walk. The man seems to be asking with some quality of knowledge, just give me a taste of that skin just there. Oh, please, please, those sweet perky tits. His voice is the sound of a storm moving offshore, coaxing her into the surf, demanding her devotion for just a little while. She seems inclined to give in, the clouds tugging at her hand while the other one remains locked onto his. Em is used to this flirtation and much more interested in the sand breathing beneath him. Oval-shaped cells bubble up, surging between his toes, clear drool emerging from holes that pop from the porous tissue. He calls out, please, oh look, look between my sweet perky toes. His mother reacts instantly, as if she heard his voice before he opened his mouth. With a single gesture, she digs her thumb and forefinger into one of the opened pores. M is knocked down beside the widening gap. The sand growing wetter with each flex of the muscle in her forearm, he breathes through his teeth, through the O that his lips make. One of his eyelashes is caught inside out. After humming and digging for several minutes, his mother grasps something solid. She grips it like the head of a bullet that must come out and tugs at the ground, her other hand flat in a pool of sandy water, keeping her steady. A head, the size of a thumbnail appears from the wound, then a thousand legs on a black soaked body. The massive worm is very much alive and reacts instantly, coiling itself around her fingers, gripping her wrist like a damp leather strap. He sees the pleasure of tightening muscle under its thin skin and M stops breathing. She disentangles the thing from herself and lets it fall onto his body. The thousand legs animate in tiny moving circles, each wheelhouse working to crawl up his leg. This is a significant moment. 
He wonders if it is possible to be pulled back into the creature's hole, sealed into the lung of the beach, his whole body wrapped in its rust-lined scales, to forever join this precious, powerful thing, this thing of cold-blooded muscle with only an open mouth and no eyes. The remoteness of M's home gives it a false sense of perpetuity. Again and again and again, the fishermen slide up to the dock, slick with the wet feet of swimmers and mackerel intestines splattered across rotting board. Abandoned fish hooks stick up from the cracks. Lines of waves crest over cliffs shaped like broad men's thighs, hairy with Atlantic sea moss, strong and resolute against the wind. The line of the island forms a crop. Before her departure, his mother holds her own with both hands and says, this is power. This is where we live. But his father just calls it stone and returns to towing a line between their small portion of rocky beach and the dinghy he uses to fish. Shards of glass collect on this beach, thrown back from the tide, pieces broken to fit between a child's toes. There is more of that rare blue kind here than anywhere else on the island. It is rocked to a fine smoothness, dusted with salt and bleached by the sun. The island is an idle rock with a breeze that keeps the black flies away. No need for shoes, except required to get into the amusement park built by a retired tycoon. The park seduces its crowds with stale fried dough, painted rocks, chipped buoy mobiles, all of it a gift wrapped, relentless and nauseating splashes and splashes of fun, a rainbow of smashed light bulbs. On one side of the mirror, M's place of birth is a sunken ship split in two, all of her degenerate crew lost and long forgotten. On the other side, it is a fun house, freshly painted every June with the sweat of rich buttery lobster shells and sour gin. It starts here because it ends here. Thank you guys. <laughs>